You guys have been waiting for her, and here she is, Skullgirl, the free, I would say free-to-play version of the infantry heroes you want, right? The infantry hero from the Lucky Wheel, everyone kind of fallen in love with her, and we'll explain why, because she's actually a phenomenal hero for either free-to-players and low spenders. So let's go into Skullgirl, the Scarlet Scimitar. Hello guys, yes, smash like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneak and an official Call of Dragons content creator. And we're here again, like always, talking about Call of Dragons. And we've got Skogel, Skogel on the chopping block. And this is basically the final hero that we need to talk about. And we're back up to date with our heroes. Maybe in the future I might slowly redo some of these, uh, um, you know, heroes, like some of the uh, um, epic heroes maybe some of the older generation of little heroes here maybe we'll see how things go but so far to this day my builds still work i'm running the exact same builds in those videos as we are now right so score girl is she good and as you can see we've got a 5511 and I'm going to tell you right now, I think she's actually a phenomenal hero. And I think she's going to be a low-key, maybe a really good hero for the long term of infantry in this game. I think she might have, again, scary enough, more relevancy than Goresh. Especially for even the uh, infantry players that are like low spenders and the free-to-play players. Because she has, let's just say four skills and all four skills are pvp related some of them people might be like meh but you get four skills you're not wasting a single skill to start off with on top of that school girl gives you the inventory pvp and mobility tree right so this is an infant uh, like an interesting thing you can do with her and we're going to showcase obviously some interesting talent builds for school girl because of these trees that you can run right so Let's go into her skills, because I think her skill at first, a lot of people didn't really understand it. And then on when they realized how powerful it is, now they're kind of falling in love with Skogel, right? So Skogel's uh, ability is Vigor and Blood Fury. You basically get a 1k rage, boom, you get 15% HP bonus instantly, which is great. But then on top of it, you gain Blood Fury. And Blood Fury is you deal... An additional diffuse, as you can see, each legion takes 15% less damage per additional target, up to a maximum of 50%. Counterattack damage every second to all legions at close range when they launch a normal attack. So this skill, as you can imagine, is very similar to this third skill when it's surrounding these targets as Goresh, right? It's all built into one skill on her which is very cool right so you're able now to basically deal double counter attack damage and you're going to be dealing it to all legions at close range which is really cool right and it's whenever again they deal a normal attack on your legion which is easy to trigger and this is kind of the thing that infantry wants to do infantry wants to kind of tank up and dish out as much counter-attack damage as they can because that's kind of their main way of dealing damage at the moment in Call of Dragons, right? When we look at a second skill, as you can see, and I've got a, a five, we get a massive amount of HP bonus. We get a nice 10% HP bonus and another 20% attack bonus, which is just ludicrous because if you think about it, we're having a 10% bonus here and we're already gaining a 15%. So that's 25% in total when our raise skill does trigger, right? So now when we go to the third skill, this is when things start going even more a bit insane. When you're in the field, Skogel's Legion gains 60% march speed every time they berserk a charge, meaning when they run towards a enemy to launch that rampage trigger, they will also gain 1% every time they launch a counter-attack up to a maximum of 10%. So this is basically going 1% and this will obviously scale, I believe, when you're upgrading this skill, right? 
but this goes all up to 25%. So you can imagine the amount of attack speed, attack you're gaining is kind of crazy when you're doubling up on all of the counter attack damage you're dealing everywhere around you, right? So then the fourth skill, nothing, again, nothing too crazy on paper, but this triggers every five seconds and you can get healed for a quick burst of 350 troops, just gives you that nice little bit of sustain. And it might not seem like much, but when you have all of them maxed out, you're going to gain an additional 10% more counter-attack damage, guys. And it's you've got to think, look at the amount of stats we're gaining. It's just stats. This is stats. It's just stats. It's just stats after stats after stats, guys. And this is what I think is going to make Skullgirl a future, maybe champion in in the infantry role because i can imagine maybe a newer hero imagine someone more crazier than madeline almost right but they want someone like Skogel to trigger that extra hp bonus and to trigger that extra counter attack damage um triggers and to give them more counter attack damage you get what i'm saying now like i think she is a phenomenal hero and the cool thing about Skogel right now for a low spender and a free to play player, I've been running her at 5511, and that is all I'm going to recommend for most players. Run a 5511. You can go to a 5551 if you're a little bit more greedier just to get that extra bit of attack, but honestly, for so much value in this hero, you get it from this 5511. One one, and you're gonna gain this, and you can put it on, like I say, your Goresh here, which is at triple five one, and you're gonna have a really good time with that pairing right now because of how cheap the investment is for her. And the beautiful thing is, if the infantry role does get a hero that's really really good in the future with Schoolgirl, well, she is a generational two hero. So if you have been saving your tokens on your generational two heroes, and you're planning on not maybe getting the mage heroes or anyone else and you do plan to play infantry when you saw maybe the generational free infantry heroes right if you awaken this hero you are in a good spot i'm just gonna tell you you i, I believe you are in a good spot it, it, it's, it's insane that i've seen an awakened score go do so much damage in the late game especially Especially if you're a T5 player, if you have an awakened score goal, oh, it's not even funny how much damage it puts out, right? So, what are the pairings, right? Since we've been writing a little bit on her kit and how good she is and technically how cheap her investment is and how well you can, like, build her. Her, her parents are simple. Again, we already kind of discussed this on the Goresh video, but her best option is going to be the Goresh school goal match because you're gaining all these cool bonuses here. You're gaining, again, some nice HP, attack, and then a little bit of healing on top. But it's the fact that you're gaining these counter-attack damage hits that tr work beautifully with Goresh's third skill on whenever you launch a counter-attack damage, right? However... If you don't have access to Goresh, is she still worth it? And I'm going to say yes, because I'm not going to lie. I have tried it. A Madeline Skogel match is actually terrifyingly good. It's very, very good. Because as you can see, my Madeline is 5531. And you can see she also gains a 15% counterattack attack bonus and a 15% HP bonus, which is beautiful in this and the way i kind of like looking at Skullgirl is she's just a more offensive hero and she doesn't really give you that much healing it's obviously a third of the healing than gawa but it allows you to go way more offensive and you'll be surprised at how well this match actually works together right so you can definitely run that um apart from that i wouldn't run Skullgirl with gawa you could do this i've seen again people do Garwood Skullgirl with the Stripe Bear pet, allowing you just to just heal as much as you can and keep triggering it. The reason why this pet or uh, this combo does, in theory, work pretty well is again because of more Garwood skills, right? Garwood's fourth skill has a 75% to increase physical damage dealt by 15% for five seconds when healed. So you're going to get healed, obviously, whenever you trigger your skill over 1200, but 
Skullgirl's going to allow that trigger as well for 350. Like, 350 is going to trigger it every 5 seconds. So, you have that opportunity to trigger this physical damage bonus of 30% so often again with this combo so that's one other combo you could run it's again probably not as optimal as the current one of goresh and skogel but i just want to showcase look these combos do work with skogel and madeline and skogel and goward and these are the reasons why and i've explained it right nice and simple so artifacts and the pets these are the last bits we need to clean up on before we talk about the long winded talent page right so your artifacts are pretty simple again very similar to the ones that you're going to be running on goresh here you're going to be hitting that spirit bone talk to hit that massive fight man torn and get even more counter attack damage bonus on top of your hero that loves doing counter attack damage right if you don't have access to Spirit Bone Talk, it's not all failure. Most players do have Dragon Skill Armor, I would hope. So then I would rock this. It allows you to gain your um, ranged resistance as well through raid skills, which is a 15% reduction in range damage. On top of this, the 3900 shield is just beautiful on top of the mass amount of um infantry hp you're gonna obtain from this artifact so i really do love um this artifact on infantry right and if you kind of want to go for more of an offensive role you can run grandma's warhammer great little cc effect stunning four players or one i didn't mention with goresh which is kind of one i did uh, i do apologize and i know someone meant mentioned it in um, the comments or in my chats i've known where they came through the Fang of Ashikara, this actually works phenomenally well as well. You get a bunch of defense on it, but it's the fact that you get this massive area of effect zone that deals a you know 500 damage factor to four targets every two seconds for um, eight seconds. So you're basically gaining what 2000 damage dealt to the targets because it's triggering four times so it's kind of good and um, you can run this as well if your enemies are idiots if you want to say and stand in the zone it is what it is right but if you don't have any of those cool legendaries you know what i'm gonna say to you guys you can definitely be running in the new one dagger of betrayal and um, this is a really great one for her and you could actually try on score girl Sunflame um, Hala, it might not be the greatest of artifacts, it's not too bad, but it's just a 20% chance whenever you're healed, and you're going to heal randomly 350 from your skill, and it's just going to give you an extra 150 on top, so I'm just saying 350 for 500 healing just given to you from this artifact being equipped. Kind of cool little additional effect, right? So you can definitely run this if you don't have it. If you're wondering, can you run them as a uh, behemoth raid uh, like boss taunt boy i wouldn't they're not tanky enough you would still run madeline and goward and the harlequin mask on that combo so i wouldn't use it on them right so just get that one out there and that's pretty much it when it comes to the artifacts i'm not gonna lie you could run some other stuff maybe like springbird's feather if you really want it to be a bit more mobility based but i don't like that uh, option springs of silence i personally don't like and dragon rift again i personally don't like this i don't like attack on infantry people like attack for some reason but that's not your job infantry aren't meant to deal damage boys you're meant to take the damage and be the absolute chad of the alliance and just take it all so we can blow them up with our mages and archers right so remember the roles but with all of that <laughs> let's get into the pets the pets are the final bit before we get them finish up and the pets is pretty simple as you can imagine and she follows a very similar suit to goresh so if you are wanting to excel the best and i think the best pet for her is going to be still the venomous lizard because whenever you get hit you trigger this poisonous effect at all ranges however if you really do want to because you got to remember this is like 29.1 you're gaining this quick burst damage through the broom bear here instead if you want to this is designed for more close range so again if you want to be more close range fighting run the broom bear instead and you're going to do more damage that way but the Venomous Lizard will deal more consistent damage because you're getting damage dealt from close, medium, 
and long ranges. Even though it's a little bit less damage, in theory, you're just doing it more consistently. So in theory, in, in the long term, you should be dealing more damage, right? So those are your two like counter-attack damage um, pets that you would be running. And you would be running a build similar to this, where you've got your pet skill on with your counter-attack, uh, well, counter-strike and tough counter-strike build with count uh, wild counter-strike just for more damage with robust body to increase HP, and you can then get more um, passive skills to increase, again, your units. And if I had it, you know, I would do the same here, which would be the exact same thing, just Counter-Strike, Tough Counter-Strike, Wild Counter-Strike, right? So if you didn't want to run these pets, though, you can run the Sand Lizard. This is, again, a really good alternate tank pet. It's just going to allow you to heal a ton. And I would suggest if you're running it, you need the self-heal or a stone with Tranquil Air to increase the healing granted by 4.5%. So you're just trying to amplify this as much as possible on itself. And by doing that, it's going to allow you, as you can imagine, to heal a little bit more and kind of sustain in the field. And that's just in case you didn't have these two pets. I would just recommend this. And again, if you didn't have this, you could run the Passion Pet just to get that rage accumulation speed. You might want to design the skills to be built around maybe Counter-Strike and stuff like that. That could be something you might want to do. But in reality, I would always recommend Venomous Lizard or Brewing Bear. I just wanted to give you guys a couple of other options. Potentially, that might be something that you want to run on if you don't have these pets, right? So, that's all of the nitty-gritty pairings and stuff for that done. So, let's go into your talents page, the long part, the on top of all of this that we've talked about. And it's going to go heavy into, hopefully, at least three different PvP trees that you could be running for Skogel in the season. And welcome back to the talent section. So we've got three talent pages I'm going to go over here. And three of them are basically completely different. And the different play styles for you. And you're going to see which I want, I personally prefer the most afterwards. But we'll explain why. So this is the first tree I've actually been running this season. I've been running this one a lot. And this was basically running down the PvP tree, as you can see here. And going for mainly a very tanky build. Because we're going to launch a ton of counterattacks all the time. So we're going to actually hit this maximum very, very quickly. And being in the PvP tree does grant you technically 5% counterattack damage, which is great. I did try Arrested and a Response, but personally, I feel this is a wasted skill. So I wouldn't actually recommend this skill. I would honestly put all five points into the Stubborn Fighter, because that's kind of what you're really good at doing with Infantry. So that's kind of like my only recommendation here on this build. Don't go this. This is the one thing I didn't really like. But I did like the PvP tree. It was surprisingly how good the PvP tree was with Skogel. And that's because I kind of went down this infantry tree. And you'll notice what you can kind of do because of Skullgirl's trees is you can play very, very greedy. And what I mean by that is you'll have noticed in this PvP tree, I have gone for very, very greedy points, What right? I have not taken any march speed. And that's because you do gain that very easily in these other key areas so if we go into here we can get 15 percent march speed which is basically um you know better than gaining these two at the moment because we're not too cared about um taking a little bit of a hero less skill damage because we've got all of this honestly in our kit or what we would be taking is cool header to increase our defense anyway. And then on top of this, just the one point into all conquering. It's an okay tree. I'm not going to lie. If you tried this tree, you're probably going to say the same thing to me where it's a tanky tree. It is very, it's a tanky tree. I'm going to be honest. It's, it's pretty tanky. It's good because it lets you get into the fight and get out of fights too, which is really important and lets you re-engage. 
But there is two other trees which I personally have fallen more in love with. And one of them, as you can imagine, is kind of the one which all of you are probably screaming at and wondering why this wasn't the first build. But this is my go-to build now on Schoolgirl. And it's this crazy infantry and mobility tree. Because here you get to do some crazy stat stacking and some really good um, talent building which synergizes perfectly with Skogel because we get the Holy Trinity like always here and if we read a balanced heart we're gaining that 5% march speed plus 1% attack so we get a massive amount of march speed already built in. So what we do here is in this little tree in the infantry you can imagine we're taking that defense we can now go full into egoism because we don't have to really put one point into this anymore because we're getting five percent here then we've got five points into the adrenaline rush one point into cool headed and then as you can guys can imagine five points into all conquering and then the icing on the cake is the last word with 4% counterattack damage we've ready for battle, which increases our chance of dealing another extra counterattack damage. But the beautiful thing is when you went over to the mobility tree, we also get another 4%. In total, we have 8% um, counterattack damage gained all from our talent tree. And that is absurd it's so goddamn good when you use it right so you have this eight percent now basically but as you can see we finished the tree off with four points into encouraging dance for some rage generation and i always love doing this i don't know about you guys you can put five points here if you want but i really like taking one point into your 15 percent extra damage taken basically a reduction from that surrounded bonus is actually really really nice it allowed you to actually sustain a lot longer than you would imagine when you're getting obviously surrounded by multiple units and we've already this um talked about ready for battle here though as you can see this is why we don't really care about taking mark speed in this tree because again like i said we've gone really greedy and gone really balls into all the stats because we're going into this mobility tree we gain 10 percent so already we have 15%, as you can guess, from our march speed, which is beautiful for infantry. And then we have, again, being greedy, 4% less counterattack damage dealt, so we don't take as much. And then, as we've already discussed, that 4% in last word is beautiful because we take preemptive preparations. Because again, this is kind of what we do in the um, kind of fight. We want to have as much attack at the start of the fight so we can basically deal as much damage because we are going to be sometimes the main focus of the open field fight so if we can basically stay there and deal as much damage as we can that's going to be great because the lower we get the lower this boss is going to go and we're good you know it's it's it's, it's beautiful right so i really like this um for infantry it's it works kind of beautifully with score girl as well so i would take preemptive if you wanted to try uh, swift maneuvers to be a little bit more of a you know a cheeky boy and hop between different of your resource tiles you could do that but personally preemptive is just really good so this is like the second build this is the one i've actually fallen in love with a lot more it's a really aggressive counter-attack damage build i will again just move out the way for you guys so if you want to just take a quick screenshot of this you guys can and then here goes the little side bit there so you can just pause the video take a screenshot and you're all good so now we're going to go to the third and final one and this is kind of as you can imagine a mixture of both of these two previous builds and it's called what i'm nicknaming it the agro pvp build so what we're going to do here is, again, we're playing very, very greedy. But what we're doing instead of going down into the infantry tree, as you can see, we go into the other tree, the mobility, because when you go down this PvP tree, we can get a bunch of attack, a bunch of defense and health, which is great, on top of luck of the draw, which we know is great for score goal because we launch so many counterattacks reducing all damage taken by three percent for 20 seconds is beautiful basically because we have this up but because we're in the pvp tree we gain five percent now so we have five percent more counterattack damage um in the field on top of that we gain a 1.5 percent more damage this is just 
overall guys skill damage attack damage counter attack damage normal attack damage we just deal 1.5 percent more so with this counter attack damage and as you can imagine strength to strength it's beautiful when you have again another four percent in the mobility tree here it's going to grant you nine percent counter attack damage almost making you hit the ten percent but you know it is what it is you got we can't get uh, get there but you will finish on the stubborn fighter like i was talking about in this earlier build this is just so much stronger it gives you three percent more damage dealt again when you hit that 50 percent reduced marker really really good it just again amplifies how much you're dealing and then blessings of fury i just prefer getting hp i think hp is way more important than inflicting a defense break onto your target so you can see why we go for blessings of fury here and then as you can imagine we're doing as we just did in the last tree so all we would be grabbing here is that mark speed we'll be grabbing a swift analysis counter attack damage and preemptive preparations if you're wondering where your last point will go for both of these these two trees that we've just talked about when you're in this last section of mobility you will put it into plan b because with one point whenever you cast your rage skill you will gain haste meaning if you need to or maybe during fight you cast a rage skill you know at that time you're gonna get a three percent mark speed bonus that can help you hopefully turn and get away from combat safely so I would put it in here i would not put it in um this little bit here it's just it's just not worth the one percent guys it really isn't this is this utility is so much stronger for your school girl right so that is it i'm gonna again put them on screen for you guys i'll move out of the way so you guys can see all of this goodness here so this is gonna be the um let me bring it up first the tanky build so this is kind of like the average tanky build you can't go wrong with this um you just sustain in battle it's all right it's kind of like a jack of all trades and just remember you'll be going down and getting cool headed when you finish on this build when you're on counter hit you will be focusing again on ready for battle here going down the infantry tree first and then coming over to this mobility tree getting preemptive preparations and plan b and then the last tree like we just discussed we were going down the pvp tree first again but then hitting the mobility tree like we just said and getting preemptive preparations uh, once again so that's it guys We've gone through all of those talent trees. I've got three talent trees for you to choose from. My personal favorite is the second one with the infantry and mobility tree. I think that is the best build for Skullgirl, hands down. Um, it just allows you to just deal a ton of damage and get in and out of fights as well really really nicely and it kind of does everything she wants to do so that's it man if you've enjoyed today's guide and you've enjoyed all the updated guides we did on goresh 2 and we've got all the hero guides in an official playlist for you guys so you can check them all out and listen to all of my advice because all of the builds are the ones we still are running today i'm um, gonna be updating a couple though so don't worry when they come out we'll update the playlist but that's everything score girls skills pairings artifacts talents pets everything is she worth it definitely if you're looking to be an inventory player I think you might want to grab her and even just keep her at 5511 and you might future proof your account by having this investment because maybe, like I said, in the future there's going to be a generational free hero that might work with Skogel so well and a lot of players might be chasing her back and trying to get her from previous seasons, right? So that's everything you need to know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I helped you guys out and give you guys all the advice on School Girl. And until the next video, you know what to do. Stay safe. Stay sneaky. Peace out. Hit the sub button. Hit the like button. Do everything. Support the channel. And I'll catch you in the next video.